Hi, I'm Miss Jackie with Botetourt County Libraries. This is the second video in our series, BOCO History Detectives, Botetourt County History Detectives. In these videos, we'll investigate the history of our county and learn some of the stories of people who've lived here. All investigations spring from curious minds. We'll ask lots of questions. We'll use the five W's of investigation, who, what, where, when, and why. To find answers to our questions, we'll start with what we know today and work backward in time. Detective work takes time and patience. We have to be persistent. Along the way, we'll discover forgotten stories. We'll discover how to write our own stories and how to solve our own family history mysteries. Are you ready? Let's get started. In our first video, we learned about T.C. Denton and his wife Lula, who lived in Daleville in what's known as the Denton Boaz home. Today we're beginning our detective work where we ended our investigation last time, in the Daleville Cemetery. There are still many unanswered questions about the Dentons. One question I still have is, who was Robert Denton's father and mother? Even though I've followed many clues to try to solve this mystery, I've not yet found any primary sources that tell me for certain who Robert's father was. Primary sources are original materials or documents created in the time period that an event happened by people who were there. It's like an eyewitness account. Letters, journals, diaries, census and court records, birth and death certificates, military records, newspaper stories written during the time being studied are just a few examples of primary sources. As I continued to search for clues, I went back to the source I used to find TC and Lula's grave site, findagrave.com. I entered Robert Denton's name and the location Virginia. I didn't want to limit my search to just Botetourt County because I'm not sure how long Robert Denton lived in Botetourt, if he was born here or if he moved here from somewhere else. I found the find a grave record for T.C.'s father, Robert A. Denton, buried in Daleville Cemetery. But wait, just below there was another Robert Denton. This Robert died in 1805, 10 years before T.C.'s father was born. This Robert is buried in Tombstone Cemetery in Roanoke County. Tombstone Cemetery is in the Hollins area of Roanoke County, which was still Botetourt County in 1805. Roanoke County was formed in 1838 from parts of Botetourt and Montgomery counties. Was this Robert Denton related to the Dentons from nearby Daleville? Probably, but this part of the investigation would have to wait. When I saw the gravestone for Robert Denton in Tombstone Cemetery, my investigation changed direction. This unusual stone sparked my imagination. I wanted to know more about gravestones and gravestone art. The Denton stone is fascinating and holds many clues to who this Robert Denton was. We'll come back to this part of our story a little later. There are cemeteries, large and small, all across Botetourt. Many are on private property and should only be visited with the property owner's permission. Other cemeteries are open for us to explore. We should always remember to be respectful and use proper etiquette or good manners when we visit cemeteries. As we walk along the paths, we want to remember that this is the resting place for real people who lived here and laughed and, and were loved. And as tempted as we may be, we should never touch gravestones. Some are far more fragile than they appear and can easily topple over or break. Do take pictures though. 
You might use them one day to help tell your own stories. A gravestone, sometimes called a headstone or tombstone, is a marker used to show where someone's buried. They're usually made of stone, wood, or metal, and can be as simple as a rock or field stone, or as ornate as sculpture. In addition to the person's name, the gravestone might also include the date of birth, the date of death, the name of the person's husband or wife, and sometimes a poem, a prayer, or a brief line of text. Gravestones can be quite beautiful and can hold many clues for history detectives. Sometimes the designs or symbols carved into gravestones are clues about the person's life. For example, the words, Asleep in Jesus, on T.C. and Lula Denton's gravestone, and the open Bible carved into his parents' gravestones tell us that these people were Christians. The symbols on these stones, the cross and crown, an upper pointing finger, and the clasped hands are just a few of the many symbols used on old gravestones. Can you guess what these symbols mean? There are lots of websites where you can find information about gravestone art and what messages the symbols were meant to convey. Or of course, you can always request a book from the library. Sometimes gravestones are a memorial for a family instead of a single person. This monument in Fairview Cemetery in Buchanan was erected to remember many members of the Aegean family. Now it's time to go back to the Denton grave in Tombstone Cemetery to look at another way a family was remembered. This is where young Robert Denton is buried. It is a gravestone and so much more. Although it's impossible to know for certain, the story goes that the stonemason who carved this stone for the Dentons did it as a way to thank them for taking him into their home and caring for him when he was very sick. Carved on the top and down one side in English, German, and Latin is this verse. Once loved, once valued, now avails me not, though my relations have not me forgot. Sleeping in dust, I still must here remain, till the archangel calls his numerous train. Sleep on, sweet babe, the day draws nigh when God will call thee to the skies, there to behold his blessed abode and dwell forever near thy God. The inscription on the other side tells Robert's story, when he was born and died. What makes this stone unique is that also inscribed here are the names and birth dates of his family members. It even has the date his parents were married. Some of Robert's family later moved westward, so this memorial doesn't mark the places where they are buried. It is, however, a record of their family at the time they lived in Botetat. Notice the symbols on this stone. You see the sunrise, the hearts, stars, and flowers. We'll see some of those again a little later. Gravestones like this are not common in our area. Unfortunately, over time, the weather has eroded the stone and it's been damaged by vandals. It's now protected inside a fenced area. As history detectives, our jobs are not only to uncover the mysteries of the past, but to preserve and protect what we find for future detectives. There aren't many records that tell us who created gravestones for average people in the early 1800s, but this stone is an exception. It was signed by the sculptor. Lawrence Crone was a stonemason. He arrived in southwest Virginia probably around 1800. Gravestones were expensive, so not everyone could afford to pay for one to mark the grave of their loved one. Mr. Crone, like other stonemasons, 
couldn't earn enough money just making gravestones, so to earn a living, he traveled around the region, building stone walkways, walls, chimneys, mills, and houses. In his book, History of Roanoke County, Salem, Roanoke City, Virginia, and Representative Citizens, William Macaulay wrote that Lawrence Crone also built the stone house in Daleville, known as the Gish Nonager Home. It's located near the Denton Boaz home. The brick part of the house was added later. It's Mr. Crone's work carving gravestones that is our investigation today. After leaving Botetot, he traveled south to Wythe County. This is a photo of an account of payment by John Repass in Wythe County to Lawrence Crone for stonework he had done including work on a spring house and chimney. In Wythe County, he continued his work creating these intricately carved gravestones. Note the hearts and sun on these stones. They're like the carvings we saw on the Denton stone, aren't they? Lawrence Crone's work can be found in private cemeteries and in St. John's Lutheran Church Cemetery. St. John's Church Cemetery is where Lawrence Crone was buried after his death in 1836. Sadly, there is no stone to mark his grave. The good people of St. John's placed this plaque in their cemetery so that we might remember the life and artistry of this gifted craftsman. In a future episode of VOCO History Detectives, we'll travel back to Fairview Cemetery in Buchanan. We'll follow clues that will lead us to the story of another young Botetourt County family and the event in history that will seem all too familiar. If you'd like to learn more about how to become a VOCO History Detective, click on the Show More tab under this video and follow the links. Then call any branch of the Botetourt County Libraries and ask how you can pick up your own BOCO History Detective Kit. In the kit you'll find information about gravestone art along with tips that will help you solve your own family history mysteries. Thanks for watching.